welcome to She Prop Talk, the podcast for She Prop. I'm Beverly from Down and Creative Studios, and today is our very, very first podcast ever. And I have invited Sharon from Sharon Rose Cosplay to talk to me uh, for the very first podcast. I'm very excited. I'm a little nervous because this is the first time I've ever hosted a podcast. Um, but I know that Sharon is a pro and this is going to be a really fun conversation. And welcome, Sharon. Oh, Yay. thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Beverly. I'm really <laughs> excited to be to be here. I feel like so far, but also so close because I can see you. <laughs> I know, I know. It's Thank really God nice. for technology. It's so Thanks it's so that. great to be able to do this. And um, really yeah, I'm just excited that we get to connect. Uh, you're on the East Coast, right? You're in... I am. I am. I'm a Pennsylvania girl. Pennsylvania. But I actually have some family on on the West Coast. Oh yeah. So, yeah. In the um, I have some family in California and also in the Olympia, Seattle areas of Washington. So. Well, have you ever been to Emerald City Comic Con? I have not, but I okay. would love to. It's sincerely on my bucket list. Um, no joke. I have I have that like dream list of conventions I'd love to get to, and Emerald City is one of them. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to get you out here because it was it is awesome. I know you have a whole ton of fans up here. Me being one of the biggest ones, so I would, love to, I would love to fangirl over you in person. I would love to come out. That would be amazing. I, that would be amazing. So we'll cool. talk. We'll talk after this podcast. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh my gosh, oh, that's very cool. Well, um, yeah, I mean, there's like, there's so much I want to talk to you about because I've been a huge fan of yours for a long time. When I started cosplaying, I think you might have been starting at the same time. Um, but I was so inspired by your Captain America cost- oh, costume. Thank you. It just it just blew my mind. Um, and I mean the wig, the wig for one, it just <laughs> with my just, victory roll. Oh my god! <laughs> and I, I think I mean I remember seeing that and thinking like, wow, she did kind of her own design and her own style. She put her own twist into that. It's very and it, she made it made it really personal and that just really resonated with me so is that something that you carry in a lot of your costumes is that I, I do I do I think for me um what, what I really love about cosplay is it's this whole it's this whole range right so I have some amazing friends who I look up to who love to do screen accurate things and I'm in awe of that because there's this whole process of researching all the specific textures and duplicating that. And then there's this whole other end of the spectrum of people, you know, creating their own designs. And I, I love all of it. I love mm-hmm. both. But I think my my gut go-to is to create kind of my own, my own interpretation or design of a classic beloved character. Yeah. Um, usually from comics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> usually from comics, yeah. Oh, that's great. And well, that... the storytelling that goes into that. Well, your designs are just mind blowing. And uh, I was going to ask you where, so do you, you you mentioned that you um, mostly get inspired from comics or that's where your costumes are inspired from. Um, Do you, do you have favorite characters or um, like a kind of a character that really resonates with you that you connect with that you just have to make? Oh gosh. Well, I mean, yes, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I, it's kind of very, almost completely different kinds of characters. There's almost mm-hmm. no middle ground. So I really, I, I'm wearing Captain America, ironically. I didn't know we were going to be talking about Captain. <laughs> so uh, I, I love Captain America um, for for some of the reasons you mentioned. You know, it, it was my first major build and I really poured my heart into it. My first Captain America uh, breastplate doesn't exist anymore because I didn't know what I was doing and I it uh, kind of disintegrated and uh, so most of, <laughs> most of what you see is version you know 1.5 or 2.0 yeah but oh, um wow. I I love Cap because Captain America stands up for the little guy mm-hmm. and I love that Cap was a hero even before he had his superpowers you know he he had that um, just moral character to want to protect and honor mm-hmm. those who maybe couldn't stand up for themselves. So I, I try to hold on to that. And I, I love the aesthetic too. I, you know, in my version, I tried to really honor the comic book design with the, the, the scallops layered, um, you know, leather scales, oh, but to so do beautiful. it in a really feminine way. So I wanted to be, I wanted to be very kind of 
you know, feminine and even perhaps nods to pin up, but still look very strong. Yes. Like this is a person who really could lead people into battle. <laughs> well, I would follow you into battle with that. Oh, on. It is so powerful. And I love that every 4th of July you post it. We see it a lot um, throughout the year. And I'm so glad that you, you indulge us with that um, that beautiful mm-hmm. costume because it's just it's just stunning and if you're listening if you haven't seen sharon's um captain american cosplay you need to go find it right now and fawn all over it because it's amazing Thank so you. can we talk <laughs> about that uh how you made that a little bit like did you what yeah. kinds of materials did you use for the for the breastplate so those the breastplate is foam and that surprises a lot of people i think oh wow um yeah so it my probably one of the the most like proud of myself moments I had was when I was at a convention and there was this uh, booth of beautiful leather work. And one of the ladies who was working there, she called me over because she saw me from afar and she goes, how did you get this kind of patinaed finish on your leather? And I go, it's not leather. (laughs) Oh my gosh. You know, the fact that I, you know, once she got up close, she realized, but I tricked a leather worker and that made me vote. (laughs) Ah, that is so cool. (laughs) So, how did you learn how to be such a badass, right? Is this, do you have a background in making I do. creation? I, do. I have a background in art, but not necessarily in costuming. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is the most challenging canvas, if you will, that I've ever yeah. worked with. Um, my my background is in, in visual art and communication. Uh, and my fine art end of that was much more just 2D. So illustration and painting. Um, And I love sculpting as well. So I think for me, this is sort of filling that void of being able to work in this really complicated three-dimensional space. But in terms of the foam and the costuming, I had no idea what I was doing. I (laughs) definitely, I had, you know, I had comic cons. I've been going to comic cons for a while with my husband. We're both, um, we're both huge nerds. We love all things geek. Uh, And so I've always really admired when I would see other people going to these events and Mm -hmm. I could tell the artist in me was just singing with joy because I could tell, oh my gosh, I I see what you did to make that, you know, and talking with these incredibly creative people. I remember talking to an Iron Man cosplayer who, this is before I ever cosplayed and I to this day remember it because he used the pieces of plastic ice cube trays to make the spine part of right like oh my gosh like like toilet plunger holders to create arm pieces I mean he was just brilliant so I was just really inspired but in terms of the foam um I did a lot of research online I think that's something that um people who are new to cosplay I, I would just encourage you to know that for those of us who look like we have our acts together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you, what you, you only really usually see the finished product. You're not seeing the, the literally hundreds of hours yeah. of, of playing with materials and, yes. and messing up, right? We oh, mess yeah. up all the time, but then we learn so from it. So much, yes. Yeah, and yes. I went to YouTube and I, I did a lot of research before I, I dove in. And I have to credit um, more than, you know, more than anyone in terms of just the foundation of me learning is Evil Ted. Oh God, uh, yes! Evil, I know. Oh, right? praise Ted. evil Ted. I, Ted is amazing. <laughs> I always, I, I, I talk about, I talk about Ted probably at every single convention I guest at, and I'm always like, go follow Evil Ted. He's not evil. Uh-huh. He's a real nice guy. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. The looks the looks on people's faces when they're like, you need to go find Evil Ted. I was just at a small convention in uh, Eugene here in Oregon and someone oh. was talking to me about foam and, you know, like, how do I get started? It's like, okay, I'm going to write this name down for you and you need to go check it out. I was like, it's Evil Ted. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's amazing. And they were looking at me like, Evil Ted? I'm like, no, no, really. He's not evil. He's the nicest guy ever. Yeah, but you mm-hmm. need to go follow him. You need to go look at his YouTube videos. It's, it's yeah. So that's actually how I kind of oh. got started with the foam as well. So the first foam uh, helmet that I ever made was for my husband. It was a Magneto helmet. And I didn't really know. It was, I think it was like the first time I'd really looked on YouTube to go find a do, do it myself kind of a thing. And I yeah. stumbled across this video. Thank God. It was like, like, ah, thank you so much, Ted. That literally changed everything for me was, was that video because yeah. it seemed like it, he, the first one that I saw was about patterning. And then the second one was mm-hmm. about how to use the foam. And I mean, just having those, those tools, I was so inspired to, to go out and make, start making my own stuff. And then yeah, me end, too. end the story there. He, he not only, um, 
shows you how to do things, but he explains why. He's so yeah. good at explaining all the steps and why they're important in the order that they're in. So I felt really empowered to not be afraid to just dive in and start making stuff with them. So thank you, Evil Ted. I don't know. If yes, <laughs> I know. Good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we'll do a little shout out. Shout out yeah, to him. Sure. Uh, gosh, I have so many questions for you. Oh, Sharon, you seem to just knock these costumes out of the park in really quickly. So I want to know whatever <laughs> voodoo it is that you've been doing, please share. Because <laughs> um, you, okay, you so, and I remember the, the Maleficent uh, costume yeah. that you made, yeah. you started it and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do abs. And oh, look, it's all done and it's pretty. <laughs> and I started it like a week ago and now I'm wearing it. And now it's like, you know, it's just unbelievable. Like what? How do you do that? I know well, a lot of us want to make things faster. Faster, um, right. That's a good, that's a good question. So um, I will say the reason I'm able to do things now in a week or two, it took four to five years to get to, <laughs> to <laughs> like, like my one week costumes are really four years in the making. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So when I first started, you know, um, it would take me months, literally no joke, mo months and months to do my more complicated costumes. And, and even to this day, depending on what I'm working on and the intricacy and complexity, it may still also take months. But the reason I'm able to do some some projects much more quickly is because I have now done so many breastplates that I have. Uh... I I. I about two or three cosplays in, I, I wisened up and I started keeping my pattern Your pieces. Patterns. I started, mm, yeah, I started writing go. on them much <laughs> more clearly and transferring them to much more stable, you know, um, like thicker cardstock instead of just yeah. paper. So I have these yeah. big manila folder uh, that I just, I have my patterns and they're kind of still a hot mess, but they're still super accessible. So I was able to, for Maleficent, I was able to grab two of my breastplate patterns that I had already created and I knew they would fit me perfectly to me. Mm -hmm. And I sort of MacGyvered them together a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I built the base. And then from there, it was really easy to, to go on top. And then the other reason Maleficent was uh, faster, and this is something I, I plan to incorporate into future builds. Um, I'm really excited to do this and I want to do some tutorials on it actually, is yes. the, the really the the interesting kind of reptilian pattern that I have that's, oh, that's yeah. raised. That was actually from TND leather. Um, and oh. I find, yeah. And I'm finding that there's, I love that cosplay is becoming more mainstream because I yeah. think that um, leather companies and fabric companies are now offering so many more things and it, it is toward our target demographic. So yeah. I know that I've seen textured, uh, you know, scaled pleathers and things like that at Joann's. So I, what I did was I just contact cemented that on top of my existing oh, pattern. Gosh, yeah. What a great and then it's tip. less to paint. It's less yeah. to paint because yeah. right. Yeah. I don't have to paint yeah. that. So it really, it shaved my time down so much for Maleficent. That so is it was brilliant. The, the magic. <laughs> <laughs> so my encouragement to people who want to get faster is save your pattern. Yeah. And, um, That's a good tip. Yeah. I, I think if you take more time, it at the front end to really get a good body form, you know, take all that time to really develop a great pattern that's a go to. And I feel like you are probably, you know, the poster child of that because you <laughs> you've developed amazing um, patterns that are available for download, right? So you have some really great basics that I think will save people a lot of time too, which yes. is awesome. Well, the yeah, and the so that was um, uh, my epic echo. Mm -hmm. pattern business that I have with my friend Heather um, she developed most of those patterns initially and then we we both worked together to make to digitize them and to make them something that was understandable and easily to download and all that so she's sort of the wizard the patterning wizard but I do make my own patterns for my own costumes right. um, you're both actually, rock I'm, I'm stars my... <laughs> oh, ah, well, thank you <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, the the wasp costume that I did recently, oh. I used the same boots that I used for my Hella, and I still had the patterns from that. And that was that was great. That saved me a little bit of time, but it was still time that I that I saved because yeah. I had saved that those patterns. So I'm still learning how to make my my patterns last longer. And that's a good tip uh, with the cardstock or something that is a little right. sturdier. If you find 
something that is a base pattern that you you know you're going to use. Like if you're going to be making van braces, like why not just make mm-hmm. a general van brace pattern for yourself or a pauldron? Those are right. so hard to do uh, for some for like someone like me that I I don't know. I always have a hard time with shoulders. Um, but yeah, it's the really curves. Great. Anything that's yeah. a complex curve is really it can be really challenging. Yeah, yeah. So when you're working with uh, materials, do you? Um, do you mo- mostly work with foam or do you use EV- uh, Warbla or what, I, what's your preferred material? My preferred go-to is honestly foam, um, but mm-hmm. but I'm open to all material. I genuinely love working with a whole variety of materials. So I have, I have used a little bit of Warbla, but usually if I need a thermoplastic, I use, I have used Terraflex more than I've okay. used Warbla. Yeah. Only because, you know, not, you know, not dismissing more blood, but I, I just, for me, I can literally get in my vehicle and drive to a place to pick up, you know, right. um, Terraflex. Yeah. Um, and for, for anyone that's listening, Terraflex is another thermoplastic that you can get yes. from a leather store, like Tandy Leather, right. um, but it has the same properties, although you can use concept, uh, contact cement with it to, um, to glue it together and you can sand it, I believe. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know I, I have. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really, I really, I really like Terraflex. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but for me, you know, it, it is, I think it's interesting for me. I think the reason I, I gravitated toward foam from the beginning was the cost factor. Yeah. Um, oh, and sure. yeah. And I like that it's really lightweight. And the other thing for me too, is I I'm plus size and my weight fluctuates a lot. I mm-hmm. think perhaps more than um, a standard size body, which is fine, but I have to bear that in mind with, with costuming, right? So that I'm mm-hmm. always able to fit into my pieces and I can bend. So um, I like that foam, um, I can flex that a little bit more to get in and out of something that has to be really fitted to me without me worrying yeah. that it could snap or break yeah, um, or feel like I'm super rigid and can't move too much. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I started out thinking that Warbla was king, which which right. I'm not saying anything bad about Warbla. I've just learned no, to use it for right. different applications. Like right now, I use it mostly for uh, support underneath things. If yeah. I want something to be a little bit more rigid or I need to connect things to something else, and I'll throw in some Warbla on there if I if I need to um, or that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But the, one yeah, thing the, I, the I, foam is my go-to as well. Yeah, I think. foam is my go-to. The, I will yeah. say, though, that there are times that I really do want that rigidity and mm-hmm. so I, I, I want to play more with thermoplastics on that end. And I'm also interested, I know Smooth On has some products that will harden. I was the Epsilon Pro, I think, is something I'm going to be playing with here soon. Yes. So, yeah, I really want to play with it because, again, I really do love building out of foam. But sometimes you really need that harder kind yeah. of exterior shell for, for stability. Yeah. Depending well, on what you're making. The, uh, the Hello Horns that I made, that's what's coded on there is the Epsilon Pro. Um, so yeah. I love, I love that stuff. The Epsilon Pro stays a little bit flexible so you can have, um, you can take, take it to a con and get it kind of beat up a little bit and chances are it won't get, uh, damaged really very much. Like the only parts of the horns that got any kind of damage whatsoever were the very, very tips. And that was because I didn't put enough layers on the Epsilon. Oh, wow. That's so encouraging though. It That's was, cool. yeah. And you only need the trial size. You don't need the big giant. Sorry, yeah. Sarah, but yeah, the trial size yeah. Will, get you, <laughs> will last for a long time. Um, but yeah, no, that stuff is great. And they're located um, locally to you. They are. They are. I've actually talked to a few of the distributors or, you know, the people who were doing product things at, at conventions. And it's on my to-do list to go visit at some point, to go visit the actual plant and, and yes. see the action. Oh, I love gosh. that. Yeah. Well, if you do go, keep an eye out for my Hello costume because it's it's floating around over there somewhere. <laughs> I will. I'll take a photo. I'll do a selfie with me. It's you, but not you. <laughs> Perfect. I would. Lo- yeah. I would love that so much. Yeah, yeah. I love Smooth On. They're so great. I just. I love that they've they've kind of uh, realized like so much so many other companies out there that cosplay is like it's a there's a big business involved with that I agree if they provide the tools and if it's cost effective then you know uh or relatively anyway um then uh yeah we'll latch onto it like crazy (laughs) it's true it's Uh, true so uh, you're okay so your costumes I I went in and um took a whole bunch of screen captures 
Let's talk about your phenomenal Wonder Woman. And then we're going to talk about Loki because I just can't get enough of that Loki. But you're, <laughs> you're Wonder Woman. So tell me, was that inspired by by um, something that you saw or was that your own design? Um, I'm unfamiliar with the origins of this design. So tell me about yeah. it. I was, uh, I, well, first of all, I, I love Wonder Woman. I've always loved Wonder Woman. I don't know what little girl perhaps hasn't grown up thinking Wonder Woman exactly. was amazing. Yes. <laughs> She's amazing. Everyone She's wants to be Wonder amazing. Woman. <laughs> I know. I, I also, I, I've always also loved Greek mythology and, um, there's a running joke with some of my friends and I who are avid comic book fans. We, I love just just throwing this out now, so it's on the record. I love both Marvel and DC. Oh my gosh! What? I know. I know. I love peanut butter <laughs> and jelly. I know. It's oh. like crazy. Oh, it's uh, me, me too. Love- I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Hippolyta <laughs> and Hella. I, I love yeah. it for different, for different reasons, you know. And, and but the the running like joke or observation or what have you is for for me and for many of my friends. We've always said we we've seen a lot of similarities between the DC characters and kind of the gods of of yesteryear. You know, mm-hmm. they're they're much more um, kind of idealized. Their their power levels are like incredibly high they're seen almost like you would see the the immortals if you will um and i love marvel characters because not all of them are like that there's a lot more that are kind of um human and a little more flawed but because of that they have to overcome things in a different way so uh but specific to the dc characters especially ones you'd see in the justice league i i have always seen a lot of similarities between very specific uh greek god characters and kind of their potential comic book counterpart so Mm -hmm. for me zeus the leader of the gods i've always seen superman in kind of that light um wonder woman i've always seen a lot of correlations between the goddess of war and wisdom Mm -hmm. so athena and um so for me i i've always wanted to do a wonder woman but that nodded to perhaps a little bit more of a historical Mm -hmm. kind of take on it still not incredibly perfectly historically accurate but just a nod to that and I had this whole idea to do an entire run of all of these different characters, not just Wonder Woman, but like the Justice League as the gods of Mount Olympus. So I, I yeah. drew a lot. I did a ton of research. Oh my gosh, so much research on um, the characters and what makes them tick, both the comics and the, the god counterpart. Oh, and wow. I tried to really honor both in the costume design of them. Well, so, it yeah. just shines through. I mean, that shield is just oh, unreal. It's I'm looking at it right now. It is so big. It's, it's just, yeah. it's so great. I mean, it truly is like un, like otherworldly and godly. And thank you. I really yeah. wanted. To, I wanted to nod to kind of just the jaw-dropping scale of actual Hoplon shields. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but, <laughs> but um, they, they were they were incredibly large and, you know, they were intended that you really could, um, in, in essence, shield your body, your full body mm-hmm. if, if needed. Um, but here's the thing, though. I don't have actual Wonder Woman muscles. <laughs> so I need... <laughs> I don't have to 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 be Wonder Woman. (laughs) Right. Oh, my gosh. I I really want this massive scale, but I just, I I don't have the upper body strength. So that was a bit of a challenge. Um, I I used a couple of things. I used the general concept of punished props around shield pattern. So it looks like, you know, kind of like a pizza, if you will, all these kind of slices that go together. And um, you used because foam, the, I'm guessing. I did. Foam. I used okay. foam for the exterior, but then what I did for, I don't know how to explain this part. So it's, you know, you have the dome, but then there's kind of a straight part inside that mm-hmm. sandwiches it. Okay. And that I used foam core. I used oh. like, the st- yeah, the start of foam core because it's a lot more rigid and uh-huh. it's very, very, very light. So that really helped to stabilize it. So I guess that would be my, my tip. And then there's a little pocket wow. of a cavity and I, I purposely made a hole so I, I can keep my cell phone and stuff in the back of my nice. shield. Yay, shield pockets. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, no, yeah, that's but, brilliant. Wow, cool. Yeah, that oh, design yeah. Um, that design was kind of a dream a dream cosplay for me. I, I, I wanted the, you know, if you look closely, instead of the eagle, there there's an owl, which is the yes. not to Athena. Yeah. 
all those little tiny things I cut out of foam. It's it's honestly it's all it's mostly foam. <laughs> so did you sculpt that owl because it's phenomenal? Does no, that, I didn't. That your... I didn't sculpt it. It's 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 just foam. foam. I mean, it's foam. you made it. You created. Yeah, yeah. You cre- from scratch. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Please teach us your ways, Sharon, because it is just. There's a lot of coffee. A lot of coffee. But you know, now now that you mentioned sculpting, um, a product that I I used recently actually for um, a Countess glove, which was really intricate, was (gasps) the TNT Cosley Supply. They have their what C4 compound air dry clay. Oh my gosh! Is that that white? Is that the white clay? They have it in white, gray, and black, I think. Okay. But yes, okay. yes, it, it's awesome. When I first uh, ordered it, I, I had a fear that it would be just exactly the same as Crayola Model Magic, which I've used for other things. But oh, that yeah. can be that can be really brittle though when it's yeah. dry. Yeah. So, but it's not. It has it has a lot more strength to it. And I think other other companies are coming out with similar mm. products now, which is great. So. Uh, I'm so used to having to build up the foam and then carve it all out with a Dremel. And this is going right. to save so much time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. So so with that foam, how do you, do you just glue it onto the, um, on, into place wherever you want it to go? Do, what kind yeah. of do you use for, for that? You could, in theory, probably sculpt it right on top of, let's say you have a breastplate and mm-hmm. you want to create details on top of it. I envision that you could go ahead and sculpt kind of on top of it so that you get it to fit your form exactly and let it dry. And But it won't stick innately to the EVA foam. So once it's cured completely, you can contact cement that down or oh, okay. hot or high temp hot glue. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And then yeah. how do you, I'm like, I'm totally using this podcast to get all of my tips. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can ask you anything I want about this stuff. You um, can. Yeah. So, so then when you, uh, when you're ready to paint, how do you prep the surface? Is it like a porous surface or is it something that you can just, um, what did you, what did you use? I, I plasti dipped and then painted just like I would, but it, it, to me, when it's cured, it definitely has, it feels like it has a very, very similar texture, um, and a hint of that porous quality as actual EVA foam. So it's mm-hmm. so interesting to me. It's it's stronger in terms of its flexibility, I think, than regular EVA foam. But okay. it does have that sort of spongy, you know, it, you can kind of compress it and it'll give and then kind of go back to where it was originally. Mm-hmm. You can do that like you would with foam. It's yeah. an interesting material. I definitely want to play with it a lot more, I think. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I have a little sample of it that I got my hands on and I've put it, I've used it for some press molds um, on the project that I'm working on right now. I was like, oh, what else yeah. can I put in these press molds? So I tried that and I noticed that there was a little bit of shrinkage after it dried, just a little bit, but just not, a hint. Yeah. yeah I, I had a lot of people ask about the shrinkage. Um, I didn't notice it so much, but I think it may have just been the nature of what I was making that I didn't mm-hmm. even think to observe it. For what I was personally doing, I think a little bit of shrinking would not have made a difference in Mm -hmm. in the fit or the overall static. Um, I'd be, I kind of want to play with it a little more to see if it, yeah, I noticed it for more substantial things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I gotta, I gotta really try that stuff out. I have, uh, I've got my, my list of things that I want to try is like, is so huge. Um, Oh my gosh, me too. (laughs) So, uh, so what else, if you could, um, if you could get your hands on one material now and learn all about it, um, yeah. what's, what's something that you've been dying to learn how to do? Oh, gosh. Well, learn how to use. I, well, I want to work with Thebra and I have plans to do that. So that will be, I know you are working with that too. I've heard it takes ex- very fine details so yes. much better than, than other things. So I'm really excited to play with that. Um, I think for me, moving forward I'd like to learn to play a little bit more with silicone mm-hmm. yeah it scares it scares me basically I want to learn a lot more in regard to sculpting with maybe with um, wet clay or other kinds of clays and then just the entire process of various formats of casting yeah. which sounds incredibly daunting I, I I think I have the sculpting skill set so the actual sculpting part of it isn't what's freaking me out it's more just oh my gosh making a mold so it's done properly and how to cast properly and 
how to use different materials with different kinds of molds. That's what I'd really love to get into. Yeah. I'm just a little scared, but I mean, I've done so much so far. If someone had told me four years ago that I would be doing what I'm doing now, I would have laughed. I would have thought there's no way. There's no way I'd be <laughs> sewing and doing all this stuff. Sewing more than anything is my biggest fear, by the way, which is oh. shocks a lot of people. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I say yes I'm to with this. I'm with you there. But you did what? <laughs> well, you know, I no one's flipping the seams on that suit. Let me just okay, tell right. you. I, that was a very, like, let's hobble this together. I made my patterns with, like, tape. So, um, well, but you know what I found? I, it works. I have, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have found that um, talking to a lot of different people with a lot of different skill sets and experiences – that a lot of times when you think, oh my gosh, the way I'm doing this is so not the appropriate way, or, you know, this is very much, for a, a lot of things I've learned, like, no, even the professionals are doing things, you know, sometimes they do things that way, because it's perfectly fitted to you, and if it works for you, then it works, you know, so I think yeah. that that's a big thing, like, the way that you might approach something, or me, yeah. or someone else, we could approach things three slightly different ways, but... Yeah. If it's our comfort zone and if we have really uh, polished end result, then then yeah. why why change that? Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> Just think that encouragement. Is, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's really hard to remember that as you're working on things mm -hmm. because I think our – I think everybody suffers from imposter syn syndrome, especially when they're working on something that – like sewing that, you know, I don't feel so confident with right. or a new material – um, that I haven't worked out all the kinks on, or at least I don't feel like, or I'm using it in a different way that's not supposed to be traditionally used for that. So um, I think that that imposter syndrome kind of gets in our way sometimes. It's hard to remember that there's no one right way. Like there's at least a couple of different ways to do everything. Um, right. And if you're learning along the way, uh, I think that um, whatever that process is, is, is fine because you're exploring and it's, it's so, it's hard to keep that in perspective though sometimes and not get down on yourself when you're like, your, your pile of like, this didn't work out is getting higher and higher, you know, and you're yeah, running yeah. out of materials or you cut on the wrong bias or whatever, however you say right. that. It, I'm not it's a so funny. I, I feel that, I feel that deeply, you know, I, I definitely struggle with imposter syndrome, um, probably more than people would realize, especially when it comes to like sewing or sculpting or things like that. I just, I don't know. I think I have a good eye for design, but the actual technical skill, I just like, don't, don't look at my work or there's people that I admire so, so much that I, I just, I want to absorb everything they do like a sponge, you know, I want yeah. to just learn from people. So oh, yeah. I don't know. I think it helps maybe to know that others struggle too. And yeah. even the people that you maybe look up to, like the people that you look up to, to think, oh my gosh, I'd love to be at their level. They may be looking at you in other areas and thinking, I wish I could do that thing. So right. we all we all have different yeah. skills, which is really cool. <laughs> I, I totally agree. And I love about our community, especially in Sheep Prop, which yeah. uh, we got to like talk about how awesome Sheep Prop is. I um, love Sheep Prop so much. I really, yeah, really, really no. do. I'm so glad that we have that community. Um, and so if anyone is listening, the two people that are listening to this, <laughs> that's how yeah. I release this. The 1.5 um, people. <laughs> yeah, it's 1.5 people. Yeah. Um, she Prop is a Facebook group that is um, geared towards uh, female and non-binary uh, folks that are makers or artists or fans of that sort of thing mm -hmm. that just want to have a safe space that they can connect with others and ask questions or maybe present their things or and without any fear of, um, and I'm just going to say it, mansplaining or being right. put down or bullied right. or anything like that, which right. is, is rampant online. So we created this group so that we could be devoid of that and so far it's been just incredible um i i yeah. love it I, and i'm so I glad you're it. a huge part of this group sharon so i oh, i appreciate everything that you do all the motivation you. that you provide for everyone there <laughs> it's you. just it's just great yeah i love i love the she prop she props she she proppers she, she prop prop stars she proppers yep. i love all of it, it i know all, it it's all, all great <laughs> yeah and one thing i love about about it specifically is you know i have seen i've seen people be able to make posts about hey i'm working on you know this bodice and i need the fit to work or what have you i love that people can post work in progress photos sometimes mm -hmm. you need to be able to look at a photo but that 
particular photo may involve, you know, an undergarment or, right. or, or something that yeah. on other forms I know would be met with so oh. much, um, being treated like an object or just inappropriate yeah. commentary. So yes. we, we've not seen that. It's been so refreshing to know that I can post my questions here and not be talked down to mm -hmm. or belittled. And mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. And I also love to, I, I remember there was a situation where someone had posted um, saying they didn't feel quite so confident in their mm -hmm. um, outfit. You know, they, they felt proud of what they had done, but they weren't happy with the fit. They couldn't quite figure out why am I not happy with this? Like, what would you suggest? And instead of it only being, you look great, which is positive and uplifting and important. It, it was that plus here's constructive options because you asked, you know, mm -hmm. there, there was that invitation for cons constructive criticism. Yeah. So no, I remember um, that. that, yeah, post. that I'm was... so proud of our group. They were just <laughs> I know. Filled with it's, the best suggestions, and yeah. then and then that that individual posted a finished. Um, after, uh, oh, I know. I I think amazing. I think all of us like there was a collective like scream of yeah. like it, just like yay because that so I feel proud. like I want <laughs> I want that every day all the day, all all the time every day. Yeah. Um, I Me love too. this group, and I'm I'm so glad that people I, like it's working out for people, and that that it's yeah. filling it's filling the need that they have um maybe didn't know that they need it or you know right. we see people come to the group be like oh my god i'm so glad i found you um or we've been seeing lots of posts recently of like long time lurker first time poster um, yeah. so it's just it's just great i i love seeing everyone's participation and uh, yeah it's it's wonderful i can't say enough of wonderful I, things I about it either. and i love that you know there's everyone in there from total beginners to people who are, you know, all the way up through people who are actually professionals in certain areas of the yeah. industry, whether that be makeup or sewing or having. So it's just, it's a really refreshing, fantastically positive yes. and really, really knowledgeable, like oh, really yeah. incredible group of people who are great at answering questions and encouraging folks. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Sometimes I see people posting in other forums and other groups and um, I want to go grab her and say hey come like, over to she prop and and post that question over here because we have cookies yes we have cookies we have cookies and yeah yeah oh my gosh no i love it i love it um yeah it's sometimes the internet is kind to us and sometimes it is not uh it's hard it's it's hard sometimes to um to avoid completely some of the negative things and I don't even like talking about them, but I think that it's important to talk about it because, um, it helps. I think that it helps us all learn right. how to cope with dealing with negative stuff. So, um, I am curious if you have any tips for anyone that might be feeling like they can't post anything or may ha maybe have had that kind of experience. Um, right and just are afraid to step foot back into um, the internet cosplay light again. World. Yeah. The world. Um, well, first I would just like to say that your your experiences are, are valid and, and you know, words do hurt and experiences mm -hmm. do hurt. So I, I first want to just acknowledge if you have experienced those hurts or feelings of trepidation, um, I hear you and you're not alone, but I would mm -hmm. just want you to know your voice is heard. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish that you didn't experience those things, but the internet can be really cruel. So I just want to start there. Um, and I just want you to know that remember why you want to cosplay yes. in the first place. Uh, and that can be hard Absolutely. sometimes. But yeah, I, I have come to a place where I tell myself and remind myself anytime I start feeling down or if I've received any negative comments that I don't cosplay for that person who's mm -hmm. making that comment. I yeah. cosplay for me. I cosplay for my joy. I cosplay because I am an artist and I want to challenge myself. I'm not in competition with anybody else out there. It's, it's for me. You know, mm -hmm. I, I choose to be inspired by other people's work and not uh, feel down about other people's quality of work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. So I just, I just want to say that for every negative comment you might receive, 
there are so many more who would look at what you do and think you're just the most incredible person because you are, it takes so much, Mm -hmm. uh, it takes so much, you know, it takes a lot of guts to, to make something or put something on. You know, I I talk a lot about making because I make, but not everybody does. So even Mm -hmm. just the act of, you know, purchasing or commissioning something and putting yourself out there for, to, to be photographed or to go to a convention, um, to put yourself on that con floor, that takes so much guts. It really yeah. does. And and you are stronger, infinitely more strong and, and show, you know, more integrity than, than a person who would write some vile commentary behind, you know, lurking behind a keyboard. They don't know you. They yeah. don't know how, they don't know what it took for you to put that on. Exactly. They don't know how, they did, you know, they didn't spend six months making that costume or three months trial and error learning how to do the makeup that way. So just... Hold your head high and surround yourself with people who will, who will love you and support you. I think that's a big thing. Is yes, I, I find, totally agree. Yeah. Find those Finding voices. That community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Find those voices that will edify you and build you up with compassion and empathy and encouragement. Mm-hmm. Um, find those people you can go to and feel safely like, hey, I'm struggling with this particular component of this outfit. Can you help me with the, the what am I doing wrong? What would you suggest? those people that you know you won't feel bad about whatever they have to say you'll feel uplifted and and you know educated and encouraged to move forward yeah so if there if there are voices that you feel are tearing you down like pay attention to those red flags and and be be focused in who you surround yourself with yeah I you said that so perfectly I I sometimes struggle with um, uh, putting into words exactly what you just said. So thank you for saying that so eloquently. Um, but yeah, I, I have been noticing that um, it's it's uh, it's been fun to see people on SheProp posting things that they've t- comments that they've gotten in other places. Um, yeah, and we don't necessarily like it's not a man bashing group of number one she probably yeah. is not for it no we we just we don't hate our male counterparts we just um need to have our own space um but it's been kind of nice to be able to see that uh some folks have been bringing that to them and maybe that is a way a vehicle a vessel for for helping people get beyond that initial like right. uh, like turn it into something else and find camaraderie and strength um together with other with other like-minded people yeah and to know because, to know that you're not alone yeah right? you're, you're that, not alone um, exactly yeah you know the, there are people who have you know are literally this is their career you know cosplay has become their career they are respected and known in the community uh, there are clearly incredible artists, and yet they too are <laughs> receiving some of these not yeah. so not so nice comments. So, and sometimes more, uh, like a, a just oh, a barrage yeah. of them. It's just right. just crazy. Yeah, right. So just to know that, hey, those <laughs> comments are not a reflection of you doing anything wrong. They're truly just a reflection of that person who's making the comment, yeah. their insecurities or yes. fears or, or hatred or what have you. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> so whenever I get a comment that is, you know, not the, not, yeah. not intended for anything nice, we'll put it that way. Um, I, I try to think of where they, where this person was when they made that post. <laughs> I always right. put them in the bathroom, like when they were probably <laughs> sitting on the toilet texting that right. or, or typing that. <laughs> So that instantly like, like with their brings it too. down. Yes, <laughs> yes. But oh my god! Uh, oh but my god. Uh, that's a good tip. Of that, yes, <laughs> I like yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you can have that. You can have yeah. that. Just you know, just visualize them as like speaking in public. You know, don't I? I don't. I've never visualized the a, a crowd of people with it like naked or whatever they say to no to do. no because I think that would be more traumatic than anything right, but um right. but yeah to to maybe put that troll in a place that is truly where a troll would probably be like right hanging out under a bridge or in a garbage can or you know um <laughs> right. like like Oscar the Grouch kind of a thing yeah but um so I could talk to you forever I'm having so much fun me too. So much fun talking to you. Me too. Um, I really hope that I get to like meet you in person and um, check out whatever it is you happen to be wearing, and you know, ask you all about it and ask you about how you made it and everything. Um, but what what is next for you? What do you are you working on something right now, or do you have 
uh, a con coming up or what's a, what's going on? Good question. I, I have I have a convention, Ocean City Con in Maryland in December. I don't remember the exact date. I'm the worst. <laughs> Sorry, Ocean City Con. <laughs> it's on the website. Um, but uh, outside of that, I think that's the last one of the year. And then mm-hmm. I'm looking very much I'm looking forward very much to KatsuCon in February. Um, As far as, am I working on anything? So the honest answer is right now I am frantically working to just clean my poor studio. (laughs) (laughs) It's the end of the year cleaning. (laughs) It's terrifying. Oh my gosh. So uh, I, I don't, I know everyone works differently. I tend to do this thing where I will get inspired, do a ton of research and just like, as soon as I finally start, start the project, then I, I dive in 2000%. So, but then I go through periods of lulls in between that. I need a break uh-huh. after this burst of intense intensity because I don't know, I'm kind of 2% or 2000% with sure. anything I. Yeah, I, no, I get I, that. <laughs> I'm just you, I sense uh-huh. you <laughs> similar um just approach. a little bit yeah it's just, it's just a little so, bit you know i i can go for this like super creative burst for three months of like what even is sleep you know yeah yeah exactly <laughs> right um, but then after after that if i don't give myself kind of a a, a break um I, I i get burned out and i think that that's an important thing to talk about too is those kind oh, of like yeah. slumps <clears throat> so i do have i do have some projects on the horizon um, some I, I can't quite talk about, but, Ooh, um, what, what thing I can talk about, which hope I hope to do in, in 2019 is I really want to do, um, She-Ra, Ooh, an original awesome. design of her yes. at some, at oh some my point. God. I love foam. I love armor. I love props. So of course I, yes, yes. I want to, I want to tackle that and kind of do some battle damage, I think. So <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <gasps> That's so exciting. Oh my God, I can't I, wait to see that coming together. And then, gosh, I don't know. I think I'm at a place now where I I think I'm no longer afraid to want to tackle some of my dream projects. Mm-hmm. I think years ago, I, I had this thing where I was like, I, I'm not, you know, I have to be this good at these things to be able to do this project. And now I'm just like, I've done so many things that when I first started the project, I thought, I don't know how I'm going to make a fire bow, but I'm going to make a fire bow. <laughs> do you like, ever, yes. do you ever tell yourself like, oh, I'm going to figure that out eventually. Like, yes. Let me just focus oh on God. this one thing. Like, I'll, I'll figure it out. Me for like the past like five, <laughs> seven months. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. But it's like, literally, I'm going to definitely do that thing, but I don't know how I'm doing it yet. So, oh, uh, that's so funny. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> No, I can relate um, to that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have some, and I, I love Star Wars. I always have, I'm a Star Wars. Star Wars. And so I always get people who ask me like, why have you not done Star Wars anything yet? And I think, ah, because the screen accuracy makes me like panic inside. Um, <sighs> but I think I'm at a place now where I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do some stuff and some things. I, I yeah. really want to, I want to make the creature salacious crumb <gasps> so badly. Yes. He's like my dream little creature dude because creatures are my creatures are my jam. I love making creatures oh, and things like that. That's um, gonna be awesome. Yeah, and then I want to do Leia when she's disguised as the bounty hunter. So that would oh, ball. Oh my gosh! And, right, yes. it's so cool, right? She's super badass. So <laughs> yeah, we need all the badass, all the badass yeah. costumes, all the badass ladies. That is very cool. What is that? Um, is that the is it the Bosch? Ba- Bush? Bosch? Bush? Yeah. Bosch? Bosch, Bosch. Sorry, I'm Star Wars fans. You may, take, you may take my Star Wars for Skeet Girl card because I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But I don't know either. So we're together <laughs> on this. Do Please do. don't crucify us, Star Wars. No, I know. Sorry. And I've been watching. I've, watched <laughs> a, I've seen a uh, there's there's a few people who I, I follow and really admire their work who've who've done um, who've done really cool stuff with foam and or other materials mm-hmm. like a combo. So. Sam Apple Cummings is one who he did a really beautiful, I think his was foam and so did um, Core Geek. Yes. Uh, Eric did, oh my gosh, I just like stare at it like, oh, <laughs> I hope mine will look half that good when I do my thing. It's, his, yeah. his helmet is just, it's just beautiful. awesome. It's yeah. beautiful. It's very, yeah, I, I very love cool. I love his props. Um, I, I really admire him as a prop maker. Mm-hmm. I like that he uses kind of a variety of different materials to, to accomplish whatever his end goal is. 
So it, it's cool. It's cool to kind of see how other makers approach, like, how do I duplicate this form? How do I make it? How is it going to be used by oh, the maker yeah. or wearer? Like, do I need it to be light? Do I need it to light up? Do it like, it's really interesting to me to see how people approach things like oh. helmets or, or swords or like, I, I call them props, like true props, you know, how do you oh, approach those things? It's for sure. And, and how yeah. do you, um, yeah, like, how do you get us? How do you get a perfect circle? That yeah. is really hard. And so I, I really appreciate that uh, Eric will post lots of work in progress pictures or like for the wasp helmet that he did, he'll, you know, post a whole Which bunch is afterwards. It's and, so beautiful. <laughs> oh, that yeah. helmet was just amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I love seeing other people's work in progress pictures. And I think that that helps us as a community, as a, as a whole to kind of grow together and, and feel a little bit uh, more uh, like a community when we can share our, uh, our, our tips and our tricks and our methods. I agree. It's interesting. <laughs> there, are, I know there are some who, who don't, who don't. And, that's okay. and I, I don't know. Like I can, I can absolutely respect if this is a situation where, you know, perhaps, um, I know for some, it might be their livelihood. Maybe they mm -hmm. perfected a method of something and, you know, that's their bread and butter of, yeah. of literally putting a roof over their head. So they might share some, some information about how they do it, but maybe not all not the everything. specifics, oh, because, sure. which I, I absolutely respect. Um, <laughs> but there are other times when I think, you know, like, really, you're not willing to share like that makeup tip so that others could do their thing. I don't know. Yeah. For me, if someone, if someone comes to me and they they have indicated that like they they've tried to do their own research and they've been doing things this way and they can't figure quite out like what am I doing wrong or how can I make this better if they come to me with a question you know I will give them a small novel mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I, I uh, love to help yeah. others I love to help yeah. others feel like empowered so that they can make their own art you know that's yeah that makes me happy to see when others come up to me and say like Hey, I, I tried those tips that you said, and like I was able to finish this this project that I was working on. Oh my gosh, my heart explodes. That is so great. Pieces. Like yes. so proud of people. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, I love yeah. that too so much. Well, where where are we going to see you next again at the Maryland? Yes, Ocean City, Maryland, Ocean in City. December. Okay. And yeah, I'm I'm kind of kind of quick. Look up the date. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hold on one sec. And then in at Coxicon, which is Maryland, DC, in February. And that's a big one. You you should come to that. <laughs> <laughs> you should totally yeah. come to that. Yeah, ooh, Coxicon. Yeah. You know, I am I am from the East Coast, and I I do love my East Coast uh friends. And I've are got you? Some, are you from the East family. Coast? Yeah, oh. I grew up in Vermont. Oh, Tiny. cool. Yeah. Um, and then I I've spent quite a bit of time in Massachusetts and Boston in the Boston area so yeah I've been meaning to I finally finally ran into um silhouette cosplay at New York City Comic Con she is I love her. just <laughs> my heart oh my gosh and at a big con like that it was just like I can't believe I actually just ran into you that yeah. <laughs> when does that happen <laughs> yeah. um but yeah, I'll I'll think about it eventually. Yes, I, yeah. I want to do more East Coast cons because I I was at Atlanta, New York this last year, and um and that was a lot of fun. It's a lot of work to travel. Um, I know it and is. It's kind of it takes a lot of time, and I'm I guess I'm just an old lady because I get really tired after that too. It's like travel plus con. It's like no, oh. I I. I... <laughs> I get yeah. that. I get that. So, oh my my the Ocean City Comic Con is December eighth. Okay. Shameless plug. <laughs> go, go to that. It's a really fun one. Um, for me, it's so funny. I think people have this misconception that I am an extrovert. Uh, but I, fun fact, I'm totally not. <laughs> I am absolutely an extrovert. So I, I love doing conventions. I love having the honor of doing of being a guest or panelist at a lot of the ones on the East Coast. But um, after a con, I hermit so hard. <laughs> yeah. I just... I need to like recharge my battery after, after yeah. every con. And, oh, yeah. I hear that. Yes. 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 Well, well, thank you so much for talking with me. I, we obviously have a lot to talk about, so we'll have to do this again. Absolutely. Um, sometime. Absolutely. Yay. And um, thank and... you so much for having me. Honestly. Oh my God. I'm yes. so excited for She Prop Talk. This is going to be really cool. <laughs> 
I I am really looking forward to it, and I hope, like you, I'm not really an extrovert, so this is something that I am also trying out to see if I can kind of work on that a little bit because I do I feel like I need to work on my speaking and um, communicating you're with awesome. people and. No, you're you're awesome. You're awesome. No, you're awesome. <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> you're awesome. Um, so, where can we find you? Where, if someone was looking for Sharon Rose cosplay, where can we find you? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram are probably what I'm most active on. Uh, just look up Sharon Rose cosplay. Um, I'm Sharon Rose Cos on Twitter, and I'm hopeful to set up my own website here in the future. <gasps> Yay! For- blogging and more but technology so uh, I'm, I'm oh. working on it I'm working on it but in the future you'll be able to find me there again awesome. probably under Sharon Rose cosplay <laughs> okay awesome yeah. well gosh thank you so much it's been such thank a pleasure you. talking yes, to you absolutely Yay. thank you and right. until the next time right so yes yes <laughs> right. I'll see you and thanks for listening you guys yes thank you <laughs> bye, bye. Thank you.